Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about how to add Blur on Linux using PyCon. Now, you might be asking, why do I need Blur? And the answer is, you don't need Blur. And if you're on an older machine, like a laptop from 7 to 10 years ago, or even older, you don't want Blur. You really don't want Blur. Because it takes up processing and graphics power in order to have this really cool uh, useless feature and basically it is a useless feature it just makes things look pretty and if anybody who knows me knows that I like to make things look pretty so um, today I'm just going to show you how to add blur to your window manager or desktop environment using PyCom so first in order to do this you actually have to install PyCom which uh, is a little complicated, mostly because there are so many forks. So let me um, show you this. This is the fork that we're going to be using. This is called PyCom Try One Dash Git. Uh, the main fork of PyCom is a fork itself of something called Compton, which is no longer being updated. Um, like I said, there's tons and tons of forks out there so it's very easy to get confused as to which one you should use now I use try one even though it has not been updated in several months uh, I wouldn't go so far as to say it is abandoned because uh, I don't think it actually is but it's not the most updated fork that there is there's one that starts with a J that's more updated uh, like Joanna Berg or Jonah Berg or something that one will also work with blur I believe it, it kinda it, it actually might be the one that's the best for most people I, I will I will link it in the video description below uh, as well as this one here but this is the one that I was been able been able to get to work with blur so this is the one I I work now if you want to install it it is in the AUR so uh, you could do something like this just open up a terminal yay dash s oops pycom Tyrone dash git try one I call it Tyrone try one dash git and it will just install like any other program and then what you need to do is and I've already done these things so I'm not going to do them again but I'll show you what I need to do what you need to do you need to uh, m make a directory in your config file dot config and then make call it pycom and then you need to cd into that directory cd dot config Pycom, and then by default this will be a completely empty directory but you'll need to uh, change that by doing CP and then this command here I will also put this in the video description below uh, like I said I've already done this as you can tell because I actually have blur here going on in the background uh, just for you to see uh, so once you've done this you'll this directory will now have a file in it called pycom.comp and we can just vim into that so if you've never done used Vim before, you, you you use NVim or Vim. I, I have an alias called V. Somebody asked me, uh, how do you get an editor that just has V? That's just an alias for NVim, so I don't have to type it all out because I'm a lazy person. Uh, so just do do this, and this brings you to this this file here. Now, most of this stuff you don't need to be at all uh, interested in. You can mess around with it, but just make sure you maybe make a back. Always keep that. Uh, default thing there just in case you have to go through and reset it to default settings in case you mess something up so what you the first thing you want to do is search for blur which is here okay so by default these two things here um, are commented out so you need to uncomment blur method and you need to add this word here in double in, in parent in not parentheses in quotation marks dual underscore quasi and then end the, the dual quotes and end with us the uh, semicolon and then you need to uncomment blur dash size and add a number here I believe the default is 12 I went down a little bit the higher the, the blur the harder it is to see the background the lower the blur the more like it is just regular transparency now that's a, a good place to point out that this only works on windows that are transparent so if we go up here a little bit I've added these opacity rules here under the transparency and opacity settings um, 
and basically this just allows you to set which apps are uh, tr a little bit transparent. I've added Termite, Notion, and Nemo. Now this is Termite obviously and you get these names here by using a program called xprop it should already be installed in your system it just gives you this little pointer here i don't know if you really can see it or not you probably can't see it um but just click on the window you want the name of and then you want the class and you want the second this the second name here this is called the g the g class you, and you just copy that into here in 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 uh, apostrophes and it will make any program you have set like this into a, a pro program that has uh, a little bit of transparency, and then your blur will work on that program. So uh, it will also work on some other programs that have default transparency. So like Rofi will now have uh, blur. You really can't see this because it's really kind of dark, but um, it does have. If, if we go to like a, a empty workspace here and do that, you can see how it has blur. Those are the two things you need to go through and change uh, uh, first. The opacity rules and the uh, blur method. Then you need to go down here a little bit more um, and change the back end. Now by default, the back end will be X render. You need to comment that, comment that line out and uncomment back end GLX in order for this to work. Uh, you really don't need to understand what this is, but basically, if you want to know, it's the method that the compositor uses to uh, show windows or draw windows or something. I, it's it's a little, it's very complicated, and I don't understand it. I don't, I mean, unless you're a developer or something, I don't know many people who actually do understand it. Um, anyway, so once you're done with that, you just want to, you, you want to write and quit this thing here. Now you're all set up to have blur on your thing, but you probably won't have noticed anything changing. Even if you already had PyCom installed in your system, that's because you need to actually go through and start PyCom. So if we, uh, let's, see, let's, let's clear out of this and see back into the home directory. Um, if I kill Compton now, or PyCom now, like this, you'll notice my blur goes away. So if I wanted to come back, I just do PyCom and then dash dash experimental back ends and hit enter and my blur, my blur comes back and this is how you do it here now uh, if you want this to be all the time you don't want to have to run it from a terminal you should put it in your auto start file wherever that is if you're on DWM you have auto start patch you can do it that way you probably know how to do it um, if you're on some other app if you're like an i3 you can put uh, this here in your i3 config and that will work um, you can also bind it to a key binding in, X, in SXHKD like I have. So if I do Alt, Control, and P, my, it starts it up in the background. And that's the way I've had it set up. I also have it in my auto start program. But I will warn you that this is buggy. Every once in a while your monitors will go to sleep or your screen will go to sleep. And you'll come back and you'll see your screens flashing and, and, and stuff. And don't freak out. Just kill. set up a key binding to kill PyCom like I have. So if I can I can actually show you this. So that can fit. Oops, DWM. If we look here, like here, right here, I have a script that will kill PyCom here. And the PyCom is, um, let's see here, bd slash user. I can't spell today. And we're going to just vim into um, PyCom toggle. And th basically all this does is it checks if PyCom is running and it just outputs null. And then it kills PyCom and then it restarts PyCom. Theoretically. Uh, it doesn't actually work for me that it restarts PyCom for some reason. Uh, I have a feeling because it's, I'm using a B BSPWM script that just is broken. Uh, so I actually had to go through and create a second key binding to actually start PyCom. And see, as you can see here, I have PyCom dash dash experimental backends so that it starts up with my blur. And that's how you how you do blur on Linux uh, using PyCom. And it's really n not as hard as it seems. Now, I've had some problems with it because, uh, like I said, it's buggy. It is buggy. 
uh, but it's pretty. So I put up with the bugs. Um, I am going to link to that other uh, repository for uh, PyCom. I think it's called Jonaberg. It might be called something else, but I, I'll link it in below. I think that you probably will want to use that one. The method should be exactly the same. There should be no other, other than downloading a different package from the AUR. It should be exactly the same. Uh, I don't. I did set it up. I just couldn't, for whatever reason, I couldn't get that to work on my computer. And that's really something that you're gonna you're, that might happen to you. You might try this, and it may not work on your computer because. Uh, a combination of like you having a, the, a weird graphics card, maybe an out-of-date driver, or maybe a too new driver, or something somewhere on your system might just not work. Uh, and in in which case, I would recommend trying a different fork. Uh, try the try one. If that doesn't work, try the Jonaberg one. There are a couple other ones. Just do your research. The the method is the same. It's just the the fork the fork is different. So, that is it for this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so in a number of ways. Specifically, the easiest way is to subscribe. We just hit 150 subscribers, which I'm really happy about. Um, just to think that there's 150 people out there that has actually subscribed to this nonsense. It just makes me so happy. So, thank you for subscribing to all those of you that have and actually watched the end of the videos. Surprisingly, there's not a lot of people who watch all the way to the end of a YouTube video. Um, I don't I don't think I actually have ever realized that I'm one of those people that don't watch to the end of the video. So, uh, I probably should move all of these thank yous and stuff to the beginning of the video, but I, uh, I, I think YouTubers should start giving away things to, for people who just pay attention to the end of the videos. Um, if Maybe if I start making money on this, I will, uh, I'll do a giveaway and only do it for the people who watched all the way to the end of the video. Um, so, <laughs> thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.